starts now. Welcome to Newswatch 12 at 5. I'm Justin Betty. The number of missing or exploited children has been on the rise nationwide during the pandemic. That according to the latest numbers, the National Advocacy Groups. Newswatch 12's Lily Zoller joins us now live in studio with details. Lily. Thanks, Justin. The unfortunate reality of the situation is that with kids spending more time on their devices, they're at greater risk of interacting with an online predator. I talked to the Oneida County Sheriff's Office to see how they're handling this. That is what this is all about, keeping our kids safe. That's why we do this. Captain Terry Hook and her team at the Oneida County Sheriff's Office give special attention to catching online predators. Recently, they've had a lot of work to do. When we start to focus on this, we can usually catch someone in a couple of weeks, a couple of days, a couple of hours. So it, it is... It is out there, it is ongoing. Hook says it's hard to say exactly how many predators there are in the Northwoods. She does know that with the pandemic increasing screen time, especially for kids, these predators have more potential victims. And the scary part about that is that there are no statistics about kids that actually meet up with these adults that we have, right? So kids could be meeting adults at this very moment and then they have an interaction and then they go back to their regular lives and we don't know that it's actually happened. Hook says oftentimes these predators are repeat offenders. Just last year, the sheriff's office used one of their fake profiles to lure and arrest Richard Duhlman, a man with a pre-existing sex offender record. Even though you've already been arrested for um, child enticement or using a computer to facilitate a child crime, that you're still being arrested again for doing the same things. Hook says predators often find children on social media, gaming, or dating apps designed for adults. And she suggests that parents keep a closer eye on what their kids are doing. I just ask parents to not feel as if they're invading their kids' privacy, but instead thinking about their kids' safety and that they take the time to look at their devices. Captain Hook urges parents to reach out to her team if you find anything concerning on your child's device. Hey Jeff, we're almost a full week into October, but it does not feel like it. Yeah, and look what we did again today. High temperatures back up in the upper 60s to low 70s, and we'll do it again tomorrow and for Friday and probably for Saturday as well. We just cannot shake the heat, although we are now in the early parts of October. Okay, some clouds out there today, although most of central Wisconsin was clear of clouds all day long. A little band of clouds kind of hung out across Oneida County and Avilas County. Those are falling away right now. We'll have clear skies tonight and not so cool temperatures. The average low was like 38. We're going to hang out near 50 tonight and then we're going to watch this system here. That could bring us a couple rain showers tomorrow evening and then that system has eyes on us for later on Friday. Our forecast tonight though is probably cloudy skies, mostly clear skies, some dense fog late with low temperatures down near 50. Your full forecast is coming up, Justin. Right, thanks, Jeff. Tonight there's questions over COVID policies in the courtroom as a Waukesha County juror left the courthouse this summer because he says he was concerned about the virus. Well, now the judge has called him back. Sarah McGrew has details on this pandemic era controversy. When Charles Wilkie showed up for jury duty here in August, he said he was surprised to find those working in the court and very few of his fellow jurors wearing masks and practicing social distancing. So he left. Wilkie is 79 years old and a former Marquette professor. I went up to the person who seemed to be in charge and I said, this is not safe. I want to leave. She said, that's up to the judge. I said, I don't think it's safe. I want to leave. Goodbye. And you acknowledge, though, you left without being excused by the court. Returning to court on Tuesday, again with very few people wearing masks, Wilkie was up against a $500 fine for being in contempt of the court. He argued that he truly wanted to serve, but felt unsafe, and there was no one to excuse him. And I also have a responsibility to assure my own safety and the safety of those that I care about. The Waukesha County Court does not have a mask or social distancing requirement. So the premise is liberty. The premise is that personal freedom and choice, which I as a court official took an oath to uphold. What I honor and what I protect is the liberty of the citizens of Waukesha County to make the decisions that 
best meet their needs. She said if Wilkie had waited, he would have been excused. Um, any concerns would need to be addressed with the judge. And in fact, there was another juror who expressed similar concerns who waited and ultimately um, I excused based upon their concerns. The judge said that Wilkie deciding to leave could have caused what she calls a form of chaos. Not chaos because like, there's people running around and nothing can be done, but a disruption of the very bedrock of our judicial system. Although Wilkie didn't want to end with a personal comment and didn't want to speak to the press after, he did say in his September letter sent to the judge, the absence of mask and social distance in the Waukesha County Courthouse is astounding to me. A responsibility of the public servants is to keep people safe. This is not being done. That is why I left. I will be in court October 5th. I hope that my safety will be considered and that people in attendance will be masked and socially distanced. Ultimately, the judge did not issue a fine, but instead required Wilkie to serve as a juror sometime in the next year. They agreed on a date in August of 2022. That's Sarah McGrew reporting. In recent months, the COVID-19 pandemic has started having a much greater impact on rural America, which tends to have lower vaccination rates than on urban or suburban areas as it did earlier in the pandemic. This week, Wisconsin DHS announced more than $550,000 in grants to increase access and improve the quality of health care in more rural areas. The grants support education and training to assist rural hospitals and clinics in filling high need, high demand positions. Aspirus and Marshfield Clinic Health System are both among the hospital groups set to receive grants. The funds were first authorized before the pandemic, back to the 2017 through 2019 biannual budget through legislation aimed at improving rural health care. State and local leaders gathered in Wausau today to celebrate a ribbon cutting for the newly relocated Job Center of Wisconsin, Marathon County. Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development Secretary Designee Amy Pahacek says Wisconsin's unemployment rate has been better and is better than the national average, but says there is still room for improvement and adds the Job Center should also help pair workers with businesses who are struggling and may be the right fit. We know that there is a worker quantity challenge, not only in Wausau, but in Wisconsin and throughout the nation. And so being able to connect folks that are looking for jobs with employers that are looking to hire is a huge benefit in our economic recovery. Bahacek says this new facility is also home to the Division of Vocational Rehab, Veterans Employment Services, as well as the Workforce Board, saying this new larger space allows for better collaboration between partners. This space is ideal. It lets all of those partnerships come together and help collaborate to help job seekers, you know, really find that great position that's going to get them family sustaining wages and in a career path that they enjoy. Anyone looking for a job or doing some hiring can visit the Job Center for more information. The Never Forgotten Honor Flight supports veterans by giving them a trip to Washington, D.C., where they can see the war memorials firsthand. News Watch 12's Morgan Johnson tells us why they're now able to help even more veterans. No, mm -hmm. no, <laughs> I can't. Oh my God. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? No, take a look at it. This was the reaction of Jim Campbell when he received a $36,000 check for the never forgotten honor flight. That's amazing. That's, all, that's, an, that's an entire plane full of veterans in one fundraiser. Campbell helped start the never forgotten honor flight, which brings veterans to Washington, D.C. for a day. Don Panzer raised the money through the Honor Flight benefit this summer. It shows me that our communities, our northern communities, are so behind the military and so giving. And that warms my heart. Panzer has helped send 92 veterans on the Honor Flight so far. This check will send 72 more. Today was a day to applaud hey. Thank you. the community's awesome. support. Bob Smith knows veterans who have been on the honor flight and says it's heartwarming to be able to help other veterans like himself. It's unbelievable uh, what has been raised through our community to honor our veterans themselves. Smith received a $1,000 check for the Northwoods Honor Guard. They assist in local veteran memorial ceremonies. Panzer thanked the generous Northwoods community in helping the local honor flight and honor guard. Oh my God, I can't begin to put it in words. It's just, I tear up when I think about it, you know, um, and 
we're giving the chance of a lifetime to these vets who richly deserve it. That's what it means to me. Now, 72 more veterans can have a trip that they'll never forget. It's a trip of a lifetime. Reporting for Newswatch 12 in Rhinelander, I'm Morgan Johnson. Earlier this year, we told you about three decades-old cold cases in Oneida County, unidentified bodies. Coming up, we'll take a look at how local medical examiners are teaming up with federal officials to hopefully identify one of those Jane Doe's from the 40s. But first, Jeff's in with your full forecast, including how much longer these summer-like temperatures will stick around. That's next on Newswatch 12 at 5. The grand opening of Slumberland Sleep Solutions, where we've simplified, uncomplicated, and laid things out for you. Plus, mattress specials for every budget. And save big on our reclining sofas and chairs. Only at Slumberland Furniture. Don't miss three all-new episodes of Wednesday's Most Watched Dramas. They are two of our most generous funders. I've seen too many people use their money as leverage over others. If this is how you treat your benefactors, find someone else to fund this hospital. Everybody's got to be on their game, and you aren't. I'm relieving you. Never do talk about the Army. It's not that I want to keep anything from you. I did something. What happened? An all-new Chicago Wednesday, tonight on NBC. To Carpet City Flooring Center's biggest sale ever and receive free carpet installation along with an additional $300, $600, or even $1,000 of savings on all flooring products and sale prices. That's right, free carpet installation and an additional savings of up to $1,000 on top of the sale prices. See why contractors and designers only choose Carpet City Flooring Center for their flooring needs. Our prices will blow. Chayak Eja Danak Mugzuk Meow, the place where everybody plays. The Forest County Potawatomi presents a new 120,000 square foot community center in Crandon. A place for everyone to play, exercise, and have fun at an affordable price. Come in and experience the culture and endless opportunities available at the Forest County Potawatomi Community Center. For more information, please visit community.fcpotawatomi.com. The grand opening of Slumberland Sleep Solutions, where we've simplified, uncomplicated, and laid things out for you. Plus, mattress specials for every budget. And save big on our reclining sofas and chairs. Only at Slumberland Furniture. It's happening and we can't stop it. We're at peak uh, fall colors right now across far northern Wisconsin. That is giving us pictures like this. Take a look at some of these across the area today. Beautiful scenes across Rhinelander to Merrill to Eagle River up to the Butternut. A beautiful scene here, of course, from Richard and now to him, Tom. You can see the story here. Lots of great colors out there today. They'll continue into the weekend with lots of uh, really good weather on the way, uh, but we'll keep the wind down too. That will keep the leaves in the trees for now. Okay, so temperatures today, the other story, right? 70 in Rhinelander right now, 66 in Tomahawk, 72 for Merrill. That's not normal. Uh, just to give you an idea where we're supposed to be, 60 is the average high, 19 is the record low. <laughs> and so it gives you an idea what the atmosphere can do this time of year, right? Uh, with the sunset tonight at 628. Okay, so the trend going forward, notice how there's a trend, right? We're hanging out near 70, not just tomorrow, but for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and some trending behind this later on next week keeps the 70s around for us. We'll see. Uh, we're now getting into the middle portions of October. Uh, that's going to be very, very unusual. Uh, if you look back at the records, we had snow falling here uh, two years ago uh, this weekend. Okay, looking outside today, though, we had lots of uh, really clear skies across southern and central Wisconsin, but a little pesky area clouds kind of worked their way across the northwoods for a few hours this afternoon. That is now pulling into parts of Minnesota into Michigan. It will fall apart tonight because it's running into a brick wall in the form of high pressure right there. So as that lifts north, it'll kind of eat it up like Pac-Man. Uh, but this is a problem. So we have a couple of speed bumps in here. This system right there is trending north, right? That's going to bring us increasing cloud cover tomorrow and a chance for some rain showers tomorrow evening. Much of tomorrow daytime will stay dry. 
Then we're watching that system over there. That has eyes on us for later on Friday. That could bring us some thunder showers on Friday evening, about the time when we could be looking at the football games on Friday night. We'll see. It's still a day or two away, but you get the idea. We have some more rain showers back in the forecast. A pattern change is coming with some more wet weather on the way. Our forecast then for tonight, though, is probably cloudy skies, some dense fog in there just like last night. And again, the average low is 38. We're not going to do that. We're going to do 49 is the low tonight with a calm wind after midnight. For tomorrow, it's Thursday already. Increasing clouds throughout the day. There could be a sprinkle about this time tomorrow, more so after sunset with high temperatures right back up near 70 again and then looking ahead your seven day forecast by Northwoods furniture and mattress shows uh, temperatures hanging out near 70 low temperatures near 50 a chance for rain tomorrow night a better chance for rain Friday evening we should get a break in the rain on Saturday followed by a slow system getting in here Sunday to Monday that could bring us some more rain showers early next week Justin all right thanks Jeff tonight we have an update to a series of stories we first told you about in March involving three cold cases unidentified bodies found in Oneida County County years, in some cases decades ago. Well, this week, the Oneida County Medical Examiner's Office was joined by an evidence team from the FBI to exhume one of the oldest cases on file. Jane Doe 1947 was found a few miles north of Highways 8 and 51. 74 years now after she was buried, the team is shifting through the dirt, uh, sifting through the dirt in search of evidence. The medical examiner's office is trying to clean some of these John Doe, Jane Doe cases up. She was one that came right to the forefront. Um, we're hoping that we can possibly extract some DNA to identify her or locate some of her family. There are very few clues in this case. A gold ring on her left ring finger could be a wedding band. Uh, she had already started decomposing, though, by the time her body was found in the 40s. But once the team finds samples that could contain DNA, it's off to the lab. Obviously, they have other cases that take precedence over this one. Um, and realistically, what's going to end up happening in the end is we're going to have to probably use a private lab to do the familial DNA matches. And those databases cleared at least 51 cold case rape and murder cases as recently as last year. Shop says the results could take months, maybe even years. It would be time well spent making sure Jane Doe 1947 finally gets returned to her family. We'll have more on this story coming up on Newswatch 12 at 6. We'll be right back. Artist Christine Alfari believes that art should be as unique as the individual who creates it and collects it. Make an appointment to visit Christine's studio or visit online, nestled in your favorite chair, and find the perfect work of art to reflect your life and spirit. Northland Basement Systems is the all-things basementy company. Basement waterproofing, basement finishing, basement structural repair, humidity and mold control, and nasty crawl spaces too. When it comes to basement solutions, nobody does it better than we do. Since 1991, homeowners just like you in the Northland have trusted Northland Basement Systems for all things basementy in their homes. Call Northland Basement Systems today to schedule a free home evaluation. What does it mean to fight for what's right? To us, it means helping accident victims get their lives back to normal again. Habish, Habish, and Rotier. We fight for what's right. At Security Health Plan, we're celebrating you. And you. 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 And you. By offering affordable Medicare plans, with special perks just for you. Register for a seminar or personal appointment to learn more. Are you or someone you love dealing with a mental illness? NAMI Northern Lakes offers support groups for you. NAMI Peer Support Group is a confidential group of people supporting each other in recovery from mental illness. NAMI Family Support Group is a gathering of friends and family members helping loved ones who are dealing with these illnesses. Both groups are free of charge. For information, call 715-369-4740 or check out naminorthernlakes.org. 
The leader of the Wisconsin Democratic Party stopped by Rhinelander today. Ben Wickler is the chair of the Democratic Party of Wisconsin. He met with party supporters in Hodag Park to talk local issues, the 2022 strategy, saying Wisconsin will be a battleground state once again. You give up on any part of Wisconsin, this is a 1% a, a margin state, you're going to lose statewide. So uh, we have to organize everywhere, and Rhinelander is a, a critical part of that. Yeah, the message he wants to deliver is that Democrats deliver, pointing to President Biden's American Rescue Plan, Governor Evers' investment in rural broadband. People are really excited that we have a, a Democratic president and governor who are actually delivering for Wisconsin families, uh, and they're frustrated with Republicans playing politics to try to obstruct that. Republicans, of course, would disagree on that. Ron Johnson has not yet said whether he would run for re-election in the Senate. Uh, Republican candidate for governor Rebecca Clayfish has announced that she is running for governor. After weeks of political posturing and gridlock on Capitol Hill, there are signs that there could be a deal in the works to raise the nation's debt ceiling. This comes after a warning from President Biden and key business leaders that failure to reach a compromise in the next 12 days could be catastrophic. Jay Gray has details, including what it could mean for you. After blocking the process for weeks, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell in a written statement late this afternoon now says Republicans will agree to a short-term measure at a fixed dollar amount to cover current spending levels into December or an expedited reconciliation process to raise the debt ceiling so the country can continue to pay its bills. The first signs of any back and forth on the issue come as President Biden sits down with some of Wall Street's most powerful CEOs to discuss strategy and the potential consequences of failing to break through the partisan gridlock on Capitol Hill. It's a meteor headed to crash into our economy. We should all want to stop it. Analysts have predicted a government default would likely trigger a recession. More than six million jobs could be lost. Interest rates would climb. Social security payments and paychecks for those serving in the military could stop. There would likely be chaos in the markets. And as much as $15 trillion in household wealth could be lost. If you had a home and somebody said, guess what, your foundation is... It's defaulted. It's basically broken. The house will rumble and the house may, may even collapse. An ominous warning with time running out. That's Jay Gray reporting. Time now to hear what Newswatch 12 viewers are saying this week in tonight's edition of Your Two Cents. Hi, this is Linda. I really admire you, Beth. You do a good job. On the other end, still this wolf hunt, all I can say is no, no, no. Um, I thought possibly maybe Uh, meanwhile, if you want to make your voice heard on your two cents, give us a call at 715-365-8812, extension 319. Again, 715-365-8812, extension 319. I respond to calls on Friday on my two cents. We'll be right back. When you shop Goodwill for amazing deals on back-to-school items, you make an impact. Your support keeps items out of the landfill and fuels job training and opportunities for people with barriers to employment. When you shop and donate back-to-school at Goodwill, Goodwill starts with you. Northwoods Accents, located in Mercer, features a wide variety of high-quality custom log and rustic furniture, all made in the USA. View our best craft living room sets, handmade products from local craftsmen, Denali blankets to warm your winter. All products have year-round low prices with no sales pressure. The owner is available to assist you with any questions. Stop by Northwoods Accents, 5079 U.S. Highway 51 in Mercer. Straight from the source, Lake Nokoma's Cranberries in Eagle River features award-winning cranberry wines. Visit the gift shop for a wine tasting and browse the large assortment of cranberry-themed products. Marsh tours are offered summer through fall. Visit the website for details. We're divided, but we can agree now's the time to help hardworking Wisconsinites, right? Nope, not Ron Johnson. See, on lowering prescription drug prices, Johnson was a no. Adding dental and vision to Medicare? Nah. Or making childcare more affordable to help people get back to work? No way. What about making the rich, like him, pay their fair share in taxes? 
Heck no. Tell Ron Johnson, time to say yes to building Wisconsin back better. Play your way. Dine your way. Stay your way. Ho-Chunk Gaming Wittenberg. Win your way. Justin Betty and meteorologist Jeff Weller bring you the local news and weather from the North Woods alongside the WJFW Evening News Team. Watch Justin and Jeff weekday evenings at 5, 6, and 10 on News Watch 12. When you shop Goodwill for amazing deals on back-to-school items, you make an impact. Your support keeps items out of the landfill and fuels job turning and opportunities for people with barriers to employment. When you shop and donate back-to-school at Goodwill, Goodwill starts with you. All right, buddy, let's start here on campus at UWSP. Look at the colors in these trees. A beautiful campus right now. The sun is out across Portage County and a beautiful day across the area. Again, with temperatures hanging out near 70, and you know that's not normal, but we're going to hang out near 70 the next seven, eight, nine days around here. Uh, the seven day shows temperatures staying pretty uniform. Highs near 70, lows near 50. We get the story. However, we're going to get wet, so more rain showers probably okay. late tomorrow night. Another band later on Friday. We should get a break Saturday before a slow system gets in here so Sunday, not Monday. As pleasant as the last week, but Nuts. temperatures are staying warm. 70s in October? Mid-October. Right? Unusual. Thanks for joining us on News Watch 12 at 5. We'll see you back here at 6.